Today I will show you Aurora 2018, great piece of software for creating realistic HDR images. So let's start. Hey guys, it's Nemanja Sekulic and welcome to another fun episode. Today I will show you how you can create really nice HDR images using Aurora HDR 2018. And I'm so excited to show you guys how the software works. But before we start, let me quickly explain what the HDR is. HDR basically stands for high dynamic range. And imagine this situation, you're shooting landscape, you're shooting sunset, and you want to expose your shot for the sky, for the clouds, for the sun. And that's really nice. But you will have the problem, you will have really dark landscape down below, or sometimes completely black. Or if you want to proper expose a landscape, you will have so bright skies, sometimes completely white. And that's because your camera has a limited dynamic range. Camera cannot see what your eyes can see because your eyes uh, has a really, really wide dynamic range, really high dynamic range. And if you want to make your shot really nice to represent what your eyes can see, you need to make few different exposures, one for shadows, one for mid-tones and one for the highlights or few more if you want. And then you need to use some piece of software to combine all those exposures together into one to have that high dynamic range. And today I will show you how the Aurora HDR beautifully doing this job and create. you can create really realistic HDR images. So without further ado, let's jump in the software and let me show you how you can create that. Right guys, as you can see here, I have these four different exposures and we will combine them into one great HDR image that will represent something that I saw with my own eyes when I was shooting this sunset. And one tip, when you're shooting HDR images, always use a tripod because you want your camera to be uh, steady to shoot all exposures from exactly the same spot. All right, and now let's go to Aurora HDR, click here, open image and just choose exposures, I will choose these four exposures. And as you can see here, I have minus 2.7, minus 1.3, 1.3 and 2.7 exposures values. So we have few options here. I have alignment option. I don't need to check it basically because um, I use a tripod and my all four exposures should be perfectly aligned. But just in case I mess something up, I maybe moved a tripod or camera just a little bit, I will check this and the software will perfectly align all four exposures. And we have this gear icon here and you have a few more options here. Because this is just a software review, I will not uh, cover all those options here, but the ghosting basically means that if you have a wind and every different exposure has a little bit different position of the branches or anything else, it will reduce that ghosting and it will try to uh, make one really nice exposure. Chromatic aberration, if you want to remove chromatic aberration, you can do that and so on. I will just leave this color denoise and I will click create HDR. And now we will let a software to calculate all this, to align the images, to merge them together and to uh, create this HDR image out of this. And sometimes this uh, can take a few seconds, sometimes this can take a little bit more, depends of the file size, the speed of your computer, the task that the software needs uh, to complete and so on and so on. And here it is and it's really, really beautiful. That's something that I saw with my own eyes. I can see the details from the shadows, from the mid-tones and from the highlights. And if you zoom it, you can see that everything is really nicely blended together. We don't have ghosting or halo effect or anything, anything uh, that doesn't need to be here. It's really, really nice. I love how this piece of software works. So let me quickly introduce with the interface here. You have down below some presets and you have really, really bunch of presets here. As you can see, you have a lot of them and you can go and choose any of presets that you want. Or you have a categories here and you have basic landscapes, realistic, architecture, dramatic, indoor and so on and so on. You can choose from one of these groups. Now it's set to all presets and that's okay. I can set to landscape and I will have just landscape presets here, right? And that's good too. And 
on the right side you have something similar from uh, like you can see in camera row or in the lightroom so if you're familiar with the camera row or the lightroom you will be familiar with this too first you will have layers here and the layers are for creating new adjustment layer or an image layer like in photoshop and let me show you quickly maybe i want to create a new adjustment layer and it's similar like in lightroom now i have a new layer i can click this uh, brush icon and i can use brush i can use gradient mask or radial mask so let's use gradient mask and just go here to the image and create a gradient here and maybe i want to make this a little bit cooler and a little bit more magenta part of the sky or i want to make to lower the exposure of the sky or to brighten the sky and that's basically for that or you can use a brush and paint like you're doing in the camera row or in lightroom all right and when you're done just click here done and that's it and i will delete this because i don't don't need it now all right and down below you have just regular exposure contrast this is a new slider it's hdr enhanced so you can enhance the hdr look of this image to boost the contrast if you want like so and before that you have these options with the filters so you have transform option it's same like uh, you used in lightroom or camera row you have scale you have uh, aspect ratio and so on and so on and you have this lens correction it's really nice you can uh, remove distortion if you have maybe a little bit or a little bit more right i don't want to remove it or different remove chromatic aberration and so on and so on and when you move a slider just double click on it to reset and that's it right and i don't want to mess with this here so let's go down below you have a smart tone if you put it up it will boost the shadows if you put it down it will lower the highlights a little bit and it will preserve the shadows here it will pre preserve the highlights it's really really nice smart tone slider here everything it's similar like you used in lightroom color saturation vibrance color contrast you have this hdr structure so you can boost the structure a little bit like so or this is maybe too much you can soften it a little bit and boost it a little bit more and so on and so on you have this microstructure so you can boost the amount of microstructure here so it's like basically micro contrast on the contrast or with really small details then you have this denoise option if you want to denoise it and you have this image radiance so you will add something like a soft soft effect like almost like glow effect but you need to uh, increase the exposure for that you can play with these sliders you will see uh, it's different for different image you have polarizing filters so maybe you want to add polarizing filter at the top that's really nice you have these details small details medium details large details you can boost those details maybe you want to boost small details just a little bit and you will have those small details a little bit more if i boost it a little bit more you will have something more sharpened details right if we go back to zero it will be soft as it was originally and you can then protect some details mask some details and so on and so on you have this glow slider so you can add that glow effect to the highlights as you can see sometimes it's really really useful and this it's really nice i love this portion here uh, top and bottom so top it's only for the top portion of the image so you can or maybe increase exposure or decrease exposure just for the top part or contrast or vibrance or white balance so you can make it colder and go down to the bottom and maybe brighten a little bit the bottom here of the of the image and maybe boost a little bit uh, yellows actually warm it a little bit so you can do that if you want it's really nice it can split your image on the two halves and play with uh, up and uh, upper and uh, bottom half top and bottom half uh, separately that's really nice so you have this some orientation here maybe you want to go like so and then you can change the orientation of that as you can see what it's doing to the image so you can blend it better 
maybe you want to split it like so or blend it a little bit better and so on and so on you can play with this you have a curves complete curves here it's really nice you have this hsl slide uh, menu here with uh, hue saturation and luminance it's same like in lightroom and the camera row you maybe want to change the hue of the orange maybe more towards the red or towards the yellow or saturation maybe you want to boost the saturation of the orange a little bit and so on and so on color toning with the split toning options and dodge and burn you can just click start painting painting and choose the amount and dodge and burn image have vignetting options it's really really tons of options here just check it there are tutorials online that you can uh, check to see how all of those options are working and you can really achieve great effects so let me show you what i want to do with this image i will use just one of those presets maybe i will use this warm skylight right i will click on that and the preset will be applied and this is too much for me and the beauty here is that i can lower the amount of the preset here and i will just choose a little bit like so all right and then i will go here and mess with those sliders separately maybe i want to boost the shadows a little bit more maybe maybe i want to use new adjustment layer like so and go here to the brush and use the brush and when i'm using a brush you will have a lot of options here you can choose again it's brush gradient mask or radial mask i will use a brush you can choose uh you do you want to paint paint or erase or some brush preset here you can choose the softness size opacity and so on and so on you have here the density feather of the brush and so on so i will use a brush and just paint right here without any sliders and you can go here and click the mask option so you can see what you're painting i will just paint a little bit here right like so and maybe i want to brighten just this part or even this part too but before i apply the effect i will just paint here like so right and then i will go here and maybe boost the shadow from that part see it's really really nice and I can boost the shadow a lot or just portion of it. I like like so. And let me show before and after, before and after. And that's it. You can create a new layer at the top of that one with a new adjustment layer and then play again with all those options here. Maybe you want to uh, maybe to increase the exposure overall, overall or to boost the contrast a little bit, then to boost the shadows and maybe to boost the saturation just a touch like so and maybe i want to boost the saturation just in the in the orange here so i will go down below where my saturation slider is and go to the orange and boost a little bit like so and that's it let me show you before and after before and after really really nice result maybe it's too much you can always tweak that play with uh, settings and go find a proper effect what you like for your own images create anything that your heart desires so it's really really powerful piece of software i know that some of you guys will definitely ask me can i open just one exposure into aurora hdr and play with that and the answer is yes you can play with just one photo like your playing in Lightroom. So let me just quickly show you that. Go here to open, but before that, how to save this photo? Just go file, export, and you can save it, or just go here, export, and export image. You can share it to Facebook, Twitter, mail it. And if you want to export it, just choose JPEG, PNG, TIFF file, and just save it, all right? And let's go open new file, and let's open this castle. So you have two options you can use tone mapping it will automatically enhance an image in some uh, manner so you can use that or without tone mapping it will not do anything to the image just open it regularly like you will open it in lightroom so i will just open this image and here it is this is the inside part of the castle that i shoot it in france in avignon so you can apply anything on this one exposure you can normally just go here boost the shadows uh, lower the highlights maybe open the exposure a little bit or reset everything here and just go apply any of those presets maybe i will use architecture bright and let me see yeah it's really really nice and it will create really nice look out of just one exposure if you want to reset any of those uh, 
presets just go to the filters and reset all maybe you want to apply another one or maybe this is too much you can lower the amount that's great or apply the first one that i really like it for this image and then again you can go here and mess with those settings to create to tweak this photo as much as you like Right guys, you can use Aurora HDR just to edit a regular photo. You can edit portraits, landscape, architectural photo, anything that you like. You don't need uh, to use Aurora just to create HDR images. And creating HDR in Aurora, it's really easy and it's perfectly done. And I really enjoy it and really recommend you guys to try this piece of software. And if you want to try it or if you want to buy it, you have the link down there in the description and you have a promo code with my name, it's Nemanja, and you can get 10% of the price. So you have discount 10% if you like to purchase this piece of software in the next period. If you have any questions regarding to this software, please leave them in the comments below. I will be glad to answer them. So have fun, experiment, try this piece of software and see you guys in the next fun episode. Bye-bye.